My sketchbooks are such an important part of my creative process. It is the place where I play. It's the place where I brain dump, where I try different ideas, explore, experiment, try different materials. It's such an important place for me to grow as an artist. But sometimes, especially when I'm in the midst of working on oil paintings, I don't always have time to pull out paint in my studio or get messy in my sketchbooks, but I still want to be able to play and have some fun in them. So I have some materials that I use instead of using paint, especially on the days when I know I don't have time to pull out paint and clear up. I also love to use these materials when I am maybe traveling and don't want to travel with paint, or when I take my sketchbook out with me uh, you know, into the environment or somewhere where I'm going and I don't want to take paint. So today I want to share this material with you because I think it could really help you if you are looking for a substitute for paint in your sketchbox. Now before I jump into telling you what is in my red tin over here, because I have some art supplies that I love using in my sketchbook as a replacement for paint. So I'm going to share this with you because I think it would help some of you that love traveling with your sketchbooks. But before I do that, a couple of you have asked me about the paintings from the video last week about visiting the flower farm. If you never saw that video, go and have a look at last week's video. I visited a beautiful flower farm in KwaZulu Natal and went from the beautiful inspiration on the farm to the blooms in my studio to my sketchbooks and then obviously prepared myself for the paintings. And this is just one of the little paintings that I did. The other bigger one is not yet finished. Uh, I'm still busy working on it, but I'll let you have a little peep at this one quickly before I share what's in my box. This little oil painting is 30 by 40 centimeters. So it's a, it's a little one and it has some beautiful juicy textures in it uh, real fleshy painterly marks that i loved creating i love the fleshiness and the juiciness of oil paint so this little one uh, was what i started with and i'm now busy working on a slightly bigger one and this little uh, 30 by 40 centimeter painting will go up uh, shortly on my social media platforms for sale. So I also have a bit of an art haul to share with you. I've got some new supplies that arrived in the studio this week and I always love seeing what supplies artists are using in their studio or in their sketchbooks. So I'll share some of the new supplies that arrived at the studio this week. I haven't yet opened them up. And there's also something in here that is going to be living in that red box that I am wanting to share with you a beautiful substitute for using paint in your sketchbooks, especially if you're traveling, you don't want to take any paint along with you. I have a beautiful old biscuit tin here on my art desk, but I'm not about to share biscuits with you. I actually want to share with you a beautiful product or material, art material that I love using in my sketchbooks as a substitute for paint. So no biscuits today. We'll have to have tea and biscuits another time. But in my tin are a beautiful selection of tempera paint sticks and gelatos. Now, I am going to show you how I use these in my sketchbooks in place of using paints, when, especially when I'm traveling or when I'm just working in my studio and I don't really feel like having the mess of paints. Maybe I don't have enough time or maybe I'm actually planning on oil painting that day and so pulling out gouache or acrylics just feels like too much and I really want to just sit and you know do something quick in my sketchbooks. These are my go-to in place of paint because what I like to do in my sketchbooks is lay down areas of color and then be able to work back into them. So I'm going to be telling you about paint sticks and gelatos today but before that let's have a look at some art supplies that actually arrived in the studio this week and I haven't opened them up yet. I have an entire bag here of new supplies and in here are a new series of gelatos that I have just come across with some beautiful colors. So I'm going to open them up and show them to you. And I've been painting a green all over my fingers. 
and let's have a look at some of the other supplies that I've got in here. There's something else in here that I also love to use in place of paint if I am traveling and don't want to take anything messy with me. So I am going to open up this package, get all the things out, and let me show you what purchases arrived this week. I've opened up the package and I want to show you quickly what I've purchased. Some of these items have been on sale this month in Art Savings Club. Art Savings Club is a wonderful online art supply store that we have here in South Africa. But I know that you'd be able to find all of these supplies in whichever local art store you usually use. Now, first of all, before I go on to the gelatos, let me show you what I've got here. First of all, a great tip. I tend to purchase, let me get rid of that one because that one's different. I tend to purchase my colored pencils individually. Now, this is a great tip if you are wanting to build up colored pencils to work with in your sketchbooks. Rather than purchasing them in sets, which can sometimes be quite costly, especially if you are wanting to invest in some nice quality uh, colored pencils. Luminance, I absolutely love Luminance by Karen Dash. They are super, super soft to work with. Let me pull, let me pull in a, a book and I can just show you quickly. They are beautiful and soft to work with and the color ranges are gorgeous and I find that they work really easily over most surfaces. So I'm going to show you, I'll even be able to work over the gelatos and paint sticks with them. They are creamy to work with. Uh, I, can't, I can't rave enough about the Luminance pencils. They really are my absolute favorite. So this color is, uh, I don't have glasses on, Beryl Green. This one is a Payne's Grey and it's a replacement for one that has already uh, starting to run out. It's, mine's gone very small. I love drawing with the Payne's Grey. Then this I have been meaning to get for a while. It is the Burnt Sienna, but it's a 10% Burnt Sienna. So it's a lovely, soft, gentle color. Lovely for building highlights or working over something. And this one here I've also bought for highlights and it is a called Pink White. It's called Pink White. And again, I have bought it so that I can work over things. I will show you once I've got some gelatos on the page what I mean by working over them, uh, working over details. So just some colored pencils to add to my collection. I buy my colored pencils uh, and build up the colors I need individually. It is a lot more cost effective than buying a huge uh, you know, set of colored pencils. The other thing that I love to buy separately is markers now i love using markers as a substitute for paint as well so if you are out and you've got your sketchbook being able to take a colored marker and lay down a flat area of color so this is how i tend to work in my sketchbooks i'll lay out a, an area of color and then what you can do is you then work details into it now these are wonderful these are faber castell watercolor pens and on one side, they have the thicker nib. I don't, and then on the other side, they've got a slightly thinner nib. I don't really tend to use that thin nib that much. Occasionally, I'll use it to build in some details or create some kind of linear work. But not often. I mostly use them for laying down big flat areas of color. And I tend to buy all of my markers individually like this. Here's another one from the uh, Secura... Is that how you say it? Secure range. Also lovely to lay down areas of color. This is a calligraphy brush pen. Uh, there we go. So you can see how I would lay down areas of color and then work into them on with, for example, my pencil crayons. So I could then build, start to build up the images by working these materials over let's look at this white look at that can you see how lovely that is bringing in some light over that so i do tend to use markers as a substitute for paint as well as the gelato so i thought i would just show you today uh, the markers i've just purchased another one of these faber castells they are quite pricey but they are really lovely to work with and they last a long time now, I thought I would order in something a little bit more affordable, and I've never tried these before. These are a set, which, as I've just said to you, I don't usually buy sets. I like to buy things individually, but 
because I run an online support group called Creative Community Studio for artists, I do love to also know what other options are out there because sometimes, you know, somebody might be trying something for the first time and they don't necessarily want to invest in a slightly more expensive material if they're not sure that they're going to enjoy working with them. So I thought I would get out, I would order this set, which is really affordable, and see how they compare and what the colors are like. Let's pull out one of the greens to have a look, just so you know we pulled out greens here. And just like the Faber-Castell pen, they have a small pen on the one side. Oh, that's even smaller. I definitely don't think I'll be using that. And then on the other side, they have that beautiful brush pen again. So again, wonderful for laying down uh, beautiful areas of color. The only thing that I find with these packs is that the colors tend to be quite hectic. So for example, this green here, I can tell you right now that I'm not going to love this green. And chances are, oh no, look at that. I definitely probably wouldn't use that green unless of course I could take another color perhaps and work over it a little bit. You know, work into the green. Maybe, uh, let's take, you know, I've got, I've just got like a limey green color. I could actually work into that color a little bit. The other thing that I want to tell you though, is that these colors are water soluble. So again, they can be great to use as substitutes for paint. So if you are traveling and you are not wanting to take paints with you, investing in some water soluble markers. So this one is, this is already a watercolor marker. Let's have a look at the Statler one. Let's get some of this color down and let's see how it dissolves if I take some water. So there I've got the marker down. Now I take some water. Mm, it doesn't dissolve. I'm not 100% impressed with how it dissolves. But there we go. The green's dissolving a little bit better. Hmm. Questionable as to how much they dissolve. They don't really dissolve that well. Uh, but anyway, they are lovely for laying down areas of color. As I said, if you are uh, working on site or you are traveling, to be able to take markers lay down areas of color and then be able to pick up a pencil crayon or even some other materials like some chalk pastels or something like that just check that this is dry and then be able to work into them can be a wonderful way of working in your sketchbooks and as i said this is how i tend to work in my sketchbooks i lay down areas of color and then i will work into those areas of color with another material so for example I will take uh, oil pastels or I'll take chalk pastels or I'll take a variety of my pencil uh, colored pencils and I will then work that into those areas uh, creating detail so I will have to experiment a bit with this set but they do have a lovely range of colors they're not as water soluble as I thought that they would be but they do have a nice selection of colors. And if you are new to working in a sketchbook and new to building up, you know, layers in your sketchbook to then work into, maybe investing in a set like this might be super helpful for you. Uh, you know, just until you feel more confident perhaps with working with markers. So that green, for example, I don't love that green, but I could work into it maybe with a bit of a complementary color and then, uh, you know, it would start to give me a color that I enjoy a little bit more. So this is all very scribbly and scratchy and messy because I'm really just wanting to show you the colors. So those are the marker pens. Marker pens can be a fabulous way to travel with a material that can put down big areas of color for you if you are working. Uh, for example, if I needed a leaf or flowers or blooms, I could work into it, get those shapes down, and then once it is dry, you let it dry a little bit, I could then take another material and start to work into it. Well, it's not quite dry, so I can't show you how I would work into it. There we go. Can you see how I would then start to work into that leaf shape 
I don't know if that's showing in the camera, but that is how I tend to work in my sketchbooks, layering up areas and then with color and then working and pushing and pulling your lights and your darks. So markers can be a fabulous substitute for paints in your sketchbook. And I'm definitely going to explore these, this slightly cheaper set a little bit more so that I can share it with my online creator community and let them know if it's an affordable option for them to try out. Before I share the gelatos with you, I wanted to show you a product that Art Savings Club actually sent me as a gift. Often when your order is over a certain amount, they'll pop uh, a little gift into your package just to say thank you for your order. And today they sent me, well this week they sent me a Rembrandt graphite aquarel stick by Lyra, I think you say Lyra, Lyra, Lyra. And so I thought I would show it to you. It is a really fun uh, medium to work with. It is a graphite stick, so you would draw with it, just like you would an ordinary pencil. And then what you are able to do is take some water. I always travel with these. So this could also actually be a wonderful substitute for traveling with paint if you're looking for something a bit more painterly. But what you can then do is take your brush and a bit of water or as I said I love using these uh, water uh, water brush pens and the water then the graphite becomes water it is water soluble so you can then work into that graphite and start pulling out details and dissolving the graphite as you draw as you draw with it so a wonderful way to be able to travel with just a graphite stick and a water pen that would be a wonderful way to travel and still be able to get painterly marks without uh you know having to take your paints so another lovely option that fits in perfectly with today's uh little video that i'm doing about alternative things to travel with markers are fabulous to take and work over if you don't want to take paint as are graphite water soluble pencils so thank you art savings club for the free gift i definitely will be traveling with this now let's open these gelatos now you may, may be wondering why i have ordered in some more gelatos when i seem to have an entire big box of paint sticks and gelatos now the reason why i have ordered this set is because this is a set of beautiful translucent colors it's called a translucent set but I really love the look of the colors in these. You see a lot of the paint sticks and gelatos that I have tend to be quite bright colors, which is great. And if you know me, you know what a color lover I am and you know that I'm always game for some beautiful colors. But sometimes when I'm traveling or, oh, sorry, that is going to not sound really good on a video. But sometimes when I'm traveling, I want to be able to also take some more natural colors, for example, especially if I'm going to be doing some landscapes or documenting things that I'm seeing on my travels. Sometimes some of these colors are just a little bit too, whoa, bright. I never thought you'd hear me say that colors are too bright, but I do need to find some more desaturated colors. And I loved the look of this set. So let me get this package open because it looks kind of complicated but I just wanted to read you the names of these colors how delightful is this eggplant or aubergine thistle lychee persimmon turmeric hazelnut nougat oh I love nougat creme de meth olive peppercorn poppy seed and bergamot Oh my gosh, I absolutely love the names of those. Is it just me that loves the names when, when things have nice names? Anyway, I'm going to open them up and I'm going to show you how gorgeous these colors are. Well, at least I hope they're going to be gorgeous. I have the set open and let me show you the accessories that they come with. They have a blending, two little blending sponges here because you can blend these out. I'm going to show you now how you can use them. And they also have a brush. A brush which I can't get out okay here we go they have a brush because of the fact that gelatos are actually water soluble so before I show you these gorgeous colors or well before actually I haven't seen these gorgeous colors yet I'm hoping that with names like poppy seed and nougat that they are going to be gorgeous colors but before I have a look at these colors let me show you quickly how both poster 
uh, or tempera sticks and gelatos work. I've collected a couple of different ranges of tempera or paint sticks. You can often find these in the section in the art store where they keep children's uh, art materials because I think that these are developed mainly for children to use. They are like giant crayons, but they are actually a tempera paint and they dry within a few seconds. So it's really easy to work with them. They go on, oh, they feel so smooth. They feel like drawing with a lipstick. And you can work into them. They remain wet for a little bit of time. So you can smudge them. You can smear them. You can blend them a little bit. Oh, I can't get this lid off. You can blend them. You can layer them over one another. And I just love working with them. They are like putting down layers of paint. So if I was wanting to paint something, instead of getting all messy with paint, I could work in my sketchbox layering down areas of color, large areas of color, or creating even some little detail. Let it dry. It doesn't take long to dry either, which is the fabulous thing because when you are traveling or when you are working outdoors, you don't want to be waiting long periods of time for something to dry. So this is still a little bit sticky. This one I've just put down is already dry. So I could already uh, take a medium or material whatever i'm going to work with whether i'm working with chalk pastels or, or whatever i'm going to be doing my next layer in and i can immediately start to work you see i'm just using the colored pencils that i've recently got but i can immediately start to work another layer into it why because it has dried just like paint would dry let's look at that area that's also dry see how quickly it took to dry and i could now work into it with whatever other materials I wanted to. Uh, chalk pastels would work. Got some chalk pastels here. Let me show you. I could work some chalk pastels over them. Uh, you could work some oil pastels over them. Whatever materials you like to travel with. Now the thing with the poster paints or the tempera sticks, whichever name that you want to call them by, they are not actually water soluble. They're actually made as uh, paint sticks mainly for children to to draw with as they're not archival but that doesn't really matter for my sketchbooks the gelatos now are a little bit more expensive than the tempera sticks the tempera oh, these tempera sticks are going to roll away the tempera sticks you tend to come mainly in very bright colors which can sometimes irritate me a little bit because i can't really find the colors i'm looking for but if you are Going to be working over them that doesn't matter because you can you you know you can you can push and pull your values of that color with your next layer of materials now your gelatos are a little bit more expensive they are a little bit more versatile as well so for example i can put the gelatos down in exactly the same way that i put that me uh the paint stick down they can also layer over other things so this is dry now can you see how I can actually draw over it so just like you would layer layers of paint you can layer these as well the difference is though that the gelatos are water soluble so I can then take some water if I wasn't traveling with paint I could travel just with my water brush and I could actually paint into the gelato so that is the difference between the paint sticks and the gelatos the gelatos are water soluble. So, for example, put some gelato down and get my water brush, and I can then work into that and manipulate that around a little bit more. You can, it's also a lovely way to layer up things, just dry it, put it in. And layer it up so if I am traveling or I am working on location or outside or even if I'm just working in my studio and I don't want the hassle of pulling out paints these are fabulous to work with these are one of my favorite materials to turn to if I'm not going to be working with uh, you know uh, paints in my sketchbook now I also want to show you they came with a bit of a blending sponge because of course you can also put them down 
and you can blend them out a little bit or you can blend them into one another you can also rub them on matter of fact let, let me go and get a stamp and i'll show you what else you can do with them if you are wanting to build up some textures you can also take the gelatos and rub them onto a textured surface and use them for printing with now i'm not sure that i've put enough paint or gelato stick on here there we go you can see how I can use it almost as a printing material so you take whatever you're wanting to print on you rub your gelato onto that surface and then you can use it as a printing medium as well uh, some of the sets that you buy come with little stencils and things that you can use little rubber uh, stamping sets so if you see any of any sets that have that you know what they are for but I can't tell you how much I absolutely love traveling with these paint sticks. I think they are a great way to put down areas of color and then be able to work into them or be able to work, you know, the next layers of details. Especially if you love landscapes, things like being able to put down big areas of sky or ground and then be able to work on top of it. They are just the loveliest material. For your sketchbooks a little disclaimer before i carry on because i always get asked about the archival properties of paints and while i haven't really bothered to research too much what's gone into uh, the actual chemical makeup of these paints i'm never really too worried about the archival uh, elements of the materials i'm using because they're in my sketchbooks with regards to light fastness as well uh, my sketchbooks are not exposed to light. They are closed and they're kept on a shelf unless I open them up to look at them uh, to find inspiration for other artwork. So I am never really uh, too worried about the light fastness. If anything, I mean, my sketchbooks don't get sold, so I'm not worried about them from a, the terms of longevity, selling them to clients. I wouldn't ever use products that I, are not archival or have uh, you know, can, can last for long periods of time. I would never use those kinds of materials for artwork that I was selling to clients. But in my sketchbooks, I'm really not too fussed about the materials that I use. So right up front, I want to just disclaim that both uh, poster or tempera sticks, uh, that tempera sticks are definitely not archival. So I wouldn't go using tempera sticks on artworks or I'm paintings on canvas but I do love them for my sketchbooks I think that the gelatos which are obviously a slightly more expensive version and they're also water soluble I think that these are more of an artist quality uh, in terms of paint sticks if one wanted to compare the two but I also don't know how light fast these are in terms of being used for an artwork uh, perhaps the artwork would have to be sealed behind glass i'm not quite sure but i've never really checked up on them because i reserve using these paint sticks for my sketchbooks only and if anything i would never sell an artwork for my sketchbook if anything i may scan a page and use it as a print uh you know a, a limited edition print or something like that but i would never be selling the original artwork. The artwork remains closed in the books. I'm not really too worried about the about the archival <laughs> uh, quality of these materials. And to be honest with you, I've been using them for a very, very long time, and they still look as vibrant and uh, beautiful in my sketchbooks as what they did when I very first worked with them. So. As long as they survive for my lifetime and my sketchbooks to continue to inspire me then i'm happy but i wanted to just put it out there that uh i wouldn't necessarily use these uh materials on an artwork that i was selling but they're beautiful for my sketchbooks so let's go back to my new set that i've just bought let's turn the page and let's have a look at a few of these colors i won't show you them all but i Think that there are going to be a few favorites in here which I'm sure are going to come in super handy now I'm really uh, wanting to find colors that I can travel with that are a little bit more neutral this one is called nougat of course I had to pull out the nougat to try oh look at that what a beautiful color let's get my water brush 
that could be a beautiful color to work with landscapes if i was going on holiday and wanted to be able to uh, not not take paint but take a few other dry materials this one as well olive i love the look of that now this is exactly the tone that i am looking for because as i said before the colors and some of the sets that i've bought are super bright and not really uh you know useful to me if i'm out painting sort of the natural natural area if i'm painting flowers and trees and things like that honestly uh the some of the bright colors are really not the colors that i'm looking for so i'm making a terrible noise i should just tip these all out here and tip them out so i can stop crunching the plastic while i'm filming i'm sure it's not a very pleasant sound at all should have done that when i haven't got the camera on anyway let's have a look at this one it is called what is this one called thistle what a lovely name thistle oh yes look at that a beautiful 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 color lovely natural colors uh, here's another green that will be oh the bergamot i didn't realize that would be a green one. Oh yes look at that like a nice deep green that act, those two greens actually go really well together where's my water pen look there those two greens will go really nicely together so this is going to be such a useful set of colors to travel with uh, i can't wait to be able to go on a little road trip i'm going to be going on a road trip next weekend actually and i think that i will be taking this entire set with me now that i'm looking at them this one is called lychee oh, how delicious lychee oh yes look at that pink beautiful okay this i'm sold i'm really glad that i purchased this set and these will definitely be coming in handy persimmon these will definitely oh look at that now that's going to be a lovely green with this as well look at these in terms of sets of greens oh i think i've just got my three favorite color greens right there an olive color a deeper color and almost like a chartreuse a yellowy chartreuse green okay my greens are sorted i don't, definitely don't need to be traveling with green paint next weekend when i travel so i hope you've enjoyed looking at that today as i said uh paint sticks tempera sticks these tend to be a little bit uh more affordable you can buy them in most art supply stores they do come in sets though you can't buy them individually these gelatos come in different sets you get a set of pastels a set of brights this as i said is called what did i say it was called the translucent set there's nothing translucent about the colors but yes this set is called the translucence and i think you think you can also buy them in sets individual sets with like three colors at a time so these are a little bit more affordable not quite as versatile as the gelatos but i love this new set of colors let's look at one more color this looks like it's a purple eggplant aubergine oh one last color before i love and leave you where is my water brush oh yes okay i'm super happy with these and as you can see they are going to definitely come along with me on my next trip when i don't feel like taking paint along with me gelatos and temper sticks for me are a great substitute for paint in my sketchbox when i don't feel like getting messy when i don't feel like traveling with any paint this is what i go to and just so that i can show you are these a little bit dry show you how i can then take my next materials that i'm working with and draw be clumsy today draw back into them so i would now start to draw and go in with my next layers of materials depending on what it is that i'm working on uh the next whether i'm working on florals or whether i'm working on uh you know a landscape or whatever i'm working on in my sketchbook i would then be able to take my uh pencil crayons or my colored my colored pencils or my uh oil pastels whatever i take with me i would then start to work my next layer so i hope you found that helpful today if you're going to be traveling soon and you don't want to travel with paint here are some great options
Thanks for joining me in my studio again this week. Gelatos and paint sticks, temper paint sticks, are awesome to use in your sketchbooks and are especially lovely to travel with if you don't feel like taking paint with you. So I hope that's helped you. If you are going somewhere or traveling and you don't want to be traveling with any paint, maybe you want to invest in some of these to use in your sketchbooks. So if that's helped you or you found it helpful, I would love you to hit the like button. Thank you. I would really appreciate it if you have already. Uh, it really helps me to be able to allow more people to see these videos and be able to help more people. Uh, if there's something you would like me to share with you, please let me know in the comments below. I'm so happy to share what works for me in my studio. So I'll see you back in my studio again next Sunday. And if you want to join me on a regular basis, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you here again soon.